Did you ever talk about the Dobrik documentary publicly? Is that something that? Yeah, I mean, we can talk about it. Um, I never, it's never been released publicly. That's that's why I wanted to talk about it because you showed me and Jimmy. Yeah, I showed it to you guys. You saw the like what was the final cut? Yeah, in South Africa. It's a great movie, heavy movie. Wild, 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 movie. wild documentary. The story of the documentary is I started making a movie about David, who was you know one of my dearest friends. Um, about just his rise, which was unlike anything I'd ever experienced. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, this article came out about some like really terrible things that happened on the set of one of his videos, things that he didn't do, but one of his co-stars did, one of the guys, Dirty Dom, real scumbag who was in his videos. Um, you know, he assaulted this young girl in one of his videos and this story came out and just really torpedoed his career. Uh, necessarily, this is a horrible thing that happened and it shined light on really the negative sides of, of what his career had been up until then. And I was there and I didn't know that that was coming. So I captured all of that. And it was really seeing like the collapse of a career in real time. And that's what the movie was about, was about sort of how he dealt with that, about how that story came to light, what it meant to the people involved, how it affected their lives. Um, and it was a really like, I think a really monumental piece of documentary filmmaking. And we premiered at the South by Southwest Film Festival. Mm -hmm. Um, very well reviewed, like even by super skeptical reviewers like Variety and LA Times. And a lot of them would be like, I didn't want to watch a movie made by a YouTuber. Like, I don't give a shit. But it turns out this is a very, like there were a lot of reviews that said it was impartial, which was all that I was going mm. for. I didn't want people to think I was rah rah him. Mm. And I didn't want people to think that I was shitting on him. You know, I'm not in it. You've seen it. You know, mm -hmm. I'm not, it's not about me. Mm -hmm. And it's a movie, it's a piece I'm really proud of. Um, and like we had some really interesting distribution opportunities that kind of like came and went and weren't dealt with well. And then like very recently, and I don't know how to say this without causing a bunch of trouble, like very, very recently we had a very, very interested party that was a perfect place to distribute it. And it fell apart at the ninth hour because of political reasons. I believe because of political reasons that had nothing to do with me or the movie itself, but somebody involved with selling it and was fired for his job at the last minute. It kind of put us in a compromised position. I don't know that that's why the sale didn't go through, but it's one of these things. And like, I think I use as an excuse these third party factors for why it didn't get distribution, for why it's not out there. But I think the real reason is like, there's some part of me that like doesn't want to release it. Like I have a YouTube channel. With I was gonna say, why not? Ten just million viewers. Put I can put it out there. Do you think the the ball has rolled? No, too far I think down it's probably hill? more relevant now than ever. Really? Um, I don't. I don't know. I feel weird about it. You know, I feel weird about it because the impact it had on my relationship with David, which yeah. I wasn't naive to. Like my goal with that was just to sort of tell the truth and give him an opportunity to tell his truth, which I believe he did. But um, you know, I, I think that there was some expectation that the movie might protect him. And instead, I think that movie was just a very honest view of what happened. And, um, you know, like he, you know, he and I haven't really spoken since then. And that was very, that's very, I knew that was going to happen, but I still didn't, I don't deal with that well. There's not many people in this world that I like love and I really love David Dobrik. And I'm really conflicted about that. So all this just to say that, like, I think my own sort of fucked up emotions about it um, have had a negative impact on my willingness to let that documentary be seen I, and look i'm not it's not like I, i'm trying to protect him i think there's a lot of truth in that movie um you know maybe there's other also some insecurity about it which is just that like i think it is a very powerful movie and like i like making fun this is a cop out i like making fun youtube videos i hate fucking dealing with conflict in my i'm not afraid of it mm. i made a video three weeks ago called jew j-e-w yeah. about what it means to be a jew and like, you know, the kind of conflict that arrived, but like, I'm, I'm not afraid of conflict. But in this particular case, it's like, it's not about me. And I feel like, like, I don't know, I've stuck my head into something. Like what I always say, and this is a fucking cop out, and I'm embarrassed to be saying this, but it is the truth is like, I never signed up to make that movie. I wanted to make a fun movie yeah. about this kid I love named David Dobrik and his success. And then all this shit came up that was mm. horrifying, horrifying to me. And I felt an obligation to the world to to tell the truth. And I think this movie did that. And then at the end of that, I too was just like, who am I to be this? Like, why do I have to be the arbiter here? Mm, interesting. Like the magnifying glass. Or yeah, does, well, it, like, does it cover any any of the Jeff stuff or is it? Or is a, it a little bit, it touches on that. But again, I don't, Jeff speaks for Jeff in that. 
um, in that part of the narrative. David speaks for David in that part of the narrative. Um, is there any grand revelations or is it just having a, an eye, a real eye on it? I think, I think the, what the movie is at the end of the day is it shows what happens when tremendous responsibility is bestowed on individuals that are unaccustomed to that kind of responsibility in a world that has yet figured out how to deal with that kind of responsibility. I think there are parallels there with like, if you think of what rock and roll was in the 60s that we're only learning about now, like these rock stars that are dating underage women that are wreaking all this havoc all over the world with groupies and drugs and death and suicide and all of this gnarliness <clears throat> just happened then because nobody was looking, nobody was paying attention. And I think that the YouTube world, it's now finding some, some shape and some structure, but if you remember when we were coming up, like it's like no one's looking over our shoulders. I thank God that I was 35 when I blew up on YouTube. But what were you, what were you 20, 21? Yeah. Like no one's looking over Logan's shoulder. No one, no one there to be like, hey man, this isn't how you should do things. Or let's slow down. Let's think about what we're doing That's here. why I brought Mike in. <laughs> it's, no, seriously, it's why I brought Mike in. I, I, I needed an older brother to who has lived a little bit of life to be like, yo, this is not, you're not, this isn't the way to go, bro. You need, you need help. You need to pivot immediately. And I, and I think David's a product of that. It's not an excuse for the, the things that happened. Ultimately, you are responsible for what happens. Mm. And I, this is an apology for him. But I do think he was, he was part of that. It's like you, you have this hubris. You are successful because of you. No one ever told you what to do. And despite that, or because of that, you made your own decisions, mm. and those decisions led you to such a profound success. Why would you ever do anything but say, fuck the world, mm -hmm. I'm going to listen to me. Mm. But that is the very definition of hubris. Mm. Like that, you will crash into the wall at full speed if you do that. Mm. And there's a million stories, maybe not a million, but you and I probably sit here and come up with 12 names, that that is exactly what's happened to. Mm. And I think he was one of those stories. Um, and I think because of my personal relationship and my, the, just my, the intis, in, it, intimacy level I have with the characters involved, it left me feeling strange. Um, and I will say like, part of the shame I have in admitting that is that like, it does reveal things for the victims, the real victims. Um, and David Dobrik's not a victim at all. He's not a victim. Natalie's not a victim. Um, but there are victims in this story. Um, they don't get to have their story told mm. because of my insecurities because of my cowardice and not wanting to put that video out and I, i'm hyper conflicted because of that hey guys if you like that clip hit the subscribe button and if you want to see more zany clips click the video right here <laughs>